Moving on to question four. Now, we have a question here dealing with complex numbers and more specifically, the Moire's theorem, okay? So, it's quite a good question. I do really like this question. It's split up into two parts. And the first part is just asking us to show that these series can be added together because they are both infinite series C and S and they're defined by C being equal to cos theta plus a half cos five theta plus a quarter cos nine theta and so on. And then S is equal to sine theta plus a half sine five theta. That's my full plus a quarter sine nine theta and then so on again. Okay, so part E just asks us to show that C plus IS is equal to 2E to the I theta divided by 2 minus E to the 4 I theta for the first four marks. And then part B just asks us to hence show that, that S is equal to this equation here. Okay, so let's have a look at it. So part A, so let me just put my pen on. So part A. So we're adding together C plus IS. So c plus is well if we're adding these two series together so my first term would be cos theta plus i lots of s so i sine theta so let's write that down so it's going to be cos theta plus i sine theta okay so that's my first term next term would be a half cos five theta plus a half of i sine 5 here, but we can factor out the half, right? So what I'm going to have here is plus a half, and then I'll have cos 5 here plus i sine 5 here. Okay, and again, we'll just do it once more just to show the pattern. This is going to be a quarter. We can factor that uh, quarter out again, just like we did here with the half, and then we're going to have cos 9 theta plus i sine 9 theta. Okay, and this is going to go on infinitely, right? So it's going to be plus and so on. So we're not going to bother writing out any more terms. Now we need to think about getting this into this form here. So how do we do this? Well, I can use Euler's formula, right, to change how we write this. Cos theta plus i sine theta. Well, that's just going to be e to the i theta. Okay, this bit here is the same as this here. Okay. So cos theta plus i sine theta, we can rewrite as that. So let me just write that over here. Just to make it clear. Okay, so that's where that's coming from. So now, I'm just going to do the same like we've done here. So it's going to be a half e to the 5i theta. And again here, this will be a quarter e to the 9i theta. So let me just write them down. So that's going to be a half. to the 5i theta. And then again, plus a quarter e to the 9i theta. So again, this will carry on infinitely. But notice this is a special kind of pattern, right? This is a geometric sequence. Notice you've got e to the i theta plus a half e to the 5i theta, then a quarter e to the 9i theta. So what's the common ratio here? Well, my common ratio Ah, well that's just going to be a half because at each time it's times by half, a ha one, a half, a quarter. Next one would be one over eight, so it's a half my common ratio. And what's my first term? Well, my first term will just be e to the i theta. Oh, sorry, I forgot the uh, ah, I got a bit carried away. It's a half, but don't forget what my other part of this is my e term, so it's going to be a half e. And then what happens with the powers? So at each point, it's increasing by 4i theta, okay? So 4i theta. So it's not just a half. I got two carried away, then I jumped straight into my uh, my first term. So don't forget your e to the 4i theta. So if this is a series now, and it's an infinite series, then I can sum this to infinity, right? So using, so using, So this is going to be, if you remember the formula, it's going to be a over 1 minus r. So using this now, my sum to infinity, that'll be a over 1 minus r. So let's write it down again. So that's going to be my first term, a. That's going to be e to the i theta all over 1 minus r. So 1 minus a half e to the 4i theta. Like so. 
Now notice they want 2e to the i theta over 2 minus e to the 4 i theta. So how do we get in that far? We're just going to times through by 2, right? Gets rid of that half, that half there, that, what, that fraction of 1 over 2, and it gives us the correct form for the answer. So therefore, times through by 2 now. And this will give us c plus i s being equal to 2e to the i theta all over 2 minus e to the 4i theta. That's an i there, believe it or not, 4i theta. And there we have it. So we've got 2e to the i theta over 2 minus e 4i theta. Okay, so we'll just quickly clear this. So that's part A done. Now we've got to jump into part B. So part B, we've got a hen show that s is equal to 4 sine theta plus 2 sine 3 theta over 5 minus 4 cos 4 theta. Okay, so how do we do this? So what it wants is just s. So notice this is c plus i s. You could also think of this as kind of like our form of a complex number. So x plus i y. This is the real part. This would be your imaginary part. So we could just call it i m. So we just want the complex form here or the imaginary part. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to have to times our this part here, our c plus i s, through by something. And very common with complex numbers and thirds, you're going to times through by the conjugate. So your conjugate here will be 2. So I'll just call it uh, conjugate. Try the word out. For this one, so keeping it in terms of exponentials, it's going to be 2 minus e. So be very careful how you write this conjugate out. It's just going to be 2 minus e to the minus this time, minus 4 i theta. Okay. So if that's the conjugate, all I've got to do is times top and bottom by the conjugate. So what will that give us? So I've got 2e to the i theta times 2 minus e to the minus 4 i theta. Again, do the same with the denominator. times this again, so this would be if I, the same as my numerator in my second fraction, so 2 minus e to the minus 4i theta. Again, that's an i, it just isn't coming out with my fraction line, so it's a bit uh, messy, but hopefully it's still clear what we're doing so far. So, times in through now, doing the numerator first. So, if I've got 2e to the i theta times 2, that'll give me 4e to the i theta. 4e to the i theta. 2e to the i theta times minus e to the minus 4i theta. So be very careful here. This will give us minus 2e. So be careful with your power now. If you've got i theta, and then you times it by minus 4i theta, in total now we have minus 3i theta. Okay, so we're adding the powers. My denominator, if we work that out, 2 times 2, that'll be 4. 2 times minus e to the minus 4i theta. So I'm going to get minus 2 lots of that. So minus 2e to the minus 4i theta. And then I've got minus 4e, minus e, sorry, to the 4i theta times 2. So again, I'm going to have minus that. And then finally, we've got minus e to the 4i theta times minus e to the minus 4i theta. So times in these together now, we're technically going to cancel out, okay? To be kind of like your i squared here. Or minus i squared minus minus 1 is essentially what we're going to get here in principle. So this will be plus 1. Now we just need to simplify here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change back from my exponential form here and get it in terms of uh, sine and cos from my c and my s. Okay. So if I do that, hopefully I might have just about enough room. Doing the numerator first, so 4e to the i theta. Remember, we wrote down e to the i theta. That's equal to cos theta plus i sine theta. Okay, so we just need to convert all these now. So that's going to be 4 cos theta plus 4i sine theta. So that's the first part. And I'm going to do minus 2 cos 3 theta this time. Cos 3 theta. 
and then plus 2i, plus 2i, sine 3 phi. Okay, so that's my numerator done. So this is going to be quite long, um, this last line of working. Dealing with the numerator now. So we've got 4 plus 1, so hopefully that's nice and straightforward. For a further maths A-level student, that just gives 5. I've got my minus 2e to the minus 4i theta. So what would that give me? Well, that would give me minus 2 cos 4 theta. Okay, minus 2 cos 4 theta. I'm going to get plus 2i, plus 2i sine 4 theta. I'm just writing everything out here. I'm going to get a minus 2 cos 4 theta again. And then finally, I'm going to also get a minus 2i sine 4 theta. Minus, uh, sorry, minus 2. So let me just undo that. So minus 2i sine 4 theta. Again, this is very easy to make a mistake, so just take your time with this. So, simplifying here, I can now look at my denominator. So I've got 5 minus 2 cos 4 theta minus 2 cos 4 theta. So, that'll give me 5 minus 4 cos 4 theta. I've got a 2i sine 4 theta and a minus 2i sine 4 theta. So they will cancel, so that's fine. The denominator is perfect. And here now... I've got 4 cos theta plus 4i sine theta minus 2 cos 3 theta plus 2i sine 3 theta. So, how do I get the last bit of the answer here? Yes. Well, think about what's going on here. Your denominator will always be 5 minus 4 cos 4 theta. But on your numerator here, this is split up into the real parts and the imaginary parts. Now, for S, we technically only want the imaginary parts. What we've actually got here, if I write over here, what we're dealing with here is 4 cos theta, so just write my real parts, minus 2 cos 3 theta. Okay, that's my real part. That's over 5 minus 4 cos theta. And I've also got the imaginary part plus, and my imaginary part is the parts here. So it'd be 4 sine theta plus 2 sine 3 theta. And it'd be over the same denominator, right? It's just a common denominator. So, we just want the S. This here, this is C, which we which we don't want. We just want to show that S is equal to this. So, S is going to be equal to your imaginary part. So, it's going to be 4 sine theta plus 2 sine 3 theta. And there we have it. We've shown that S is equal to 4 sine theta plus 2 sine 3 theta, all over 5 minus 4 cos 4 theta. And there we have it. That's question 4, fully complete.